obviously got back now, it's back to Sunday sizes. You guys had to process that and get back on the horse very quickly mm. this week. Mm. Well, look, Brendan, I think I uh, just had a meeting with the players. Um, I think things must be put in perspective. You know, if you guys asked me after the game what happened, 14 12 up, I thought we played quite nicely. Uh, then they brought on, you know, Furlong, Doris, Gibson Park, Sheehan. You know, the list just went on and on and on. And not taking any away from the players that I have, because that's what we have. It was a good measurement for us with we as a group. Just want to quickly give you a little bit of statistics. So this tournament's been going on for three years. We started the very first game against them. We lost 31-3 at Aviva Stadium. And if I look back three years, I mean, we've obviously grown a lot. I think we've grown a lot as a group, added to our group with some, some quality players like Wilco and Acker and players like that. Um, but the reality is, is in the last three seasons, that group of players, the bulk of them, would have played three Six Nations, one, two, a World Cup, beaten the box twice, beaten, South Afri uh, beaten All Blacks twice, played in two European Cup finals against La Rochelle. And so if you just analyze, you know, without being, without being emotional about it, the development of three years for a squad like that is, is you know, is unheard of. Uh, and when they get pressure like that in big games and when they exposed to that kind of, of uh, intensity and, and opposition, it can only make you better. You know? So. You know, I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater now. We, we played all right in the first half. I'm not saying we played well. We, we stayed in the fight. Went up another couple of gears in the second half. They scored quickly in the second half. And, and I think what we learned there is that we still got a long way to go in terms of time together. You know, people ask me, so what do you need? And I said, I need time. I need these players to grow in those positions. And you know, one of the things I deliberately did is I put the whole bench on to feel the, the intensity of what it's like when a team's got you by the throat. You know, one of the examples I use is the Chiefs came here a couple of years ago. They lost in a final to the Bulls by about 70 points. You know, dominated Super Rugby after that for the next few seasons with the Chiefs. And the reason was is they were exposed to what it's like to be under the pump. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying that's the only reason, but it's one of the reasons why I cleared the bench and made sure they feel what it's like when the team's got you by the throat. And we'll be better for that. We'll be better for that going forward. reminded me on Saturday on Friday night a bit about um, Twickenham 2004, I think it was. Uh, the men against boys that they yes, took Brian yes, made his debut. Yes, yes. Almost the same sort of thing that just... Well, exactly that. that you know, I remember talking to us after that game and we, we scrummed against a guy called White and I said, why didn't you give it to him? And he said, geez, you see how angry he was, you know? And we talked about a guy like Oster Runt, who's probably the greatest loose head ever played for South Africa. And it was, it was like youngsters. And I'm not for one minute saying, guys, that... You know, I don't want the headline to be Jake says we still, you know, we just need time. We need time. You can't force track. When Furlong comes on and we put on Mornay Smith and they bring on Sheehan, you know, and then they bring on Gibson Park and we bring on Zach, De Be Zach Berger and they bring on Kalen Doris and we bring in Gamedi. And we're talking about guys that have got more test caps there than URC games we've got, you know. So it's, it's not a case of men against boys. It's just being realistic. Um, I'll tell you what it did remind me of. It reminded me of playing a really good oiled super rugby team like the Crusaders. That's what it reminded me of. Um, and that's where we want to get to, Brendan. You know, people ask me after the game, and I want to take the Bulls to that. I want to be able to run out of the change room and have a seasoned team of guys that have played over 100 times for their province. And that's why I suppose I keep banging the drum to you guys as journalists that we can't have you know, a situation where we, where we coach guys to pay their school fees and then end up going to play at big clubs and other big clubs, you know. We all talk about, you know, I read a lot of clubs saying we want to be leaders and we want to be a good club. You only get that by keeping your team together for, for many, many years, you know. Now you look at the Springbok team. The Springbok team now has been together for eight years. I mean, that's not, that's, that's a recipe for success. That's not a, that's not a, it's not a hidden secret. Um, you know, so, you know, if I, if I look at the team and I'm not taking anything away from the group I have because you can only control what you have. But if we had Ergia and Jason and Lourdes de Jager and Jesse Creel and Andre Pollard and Ivan van Seyl and Liebenberg uh, on the flank and Trevor Yankani at prop for this weekend, in other words, the last game that passed, I can tell you now the score wouldn't have been the same. And that's just because they seasoned, they're a bit older, they're a bit wiser, they've got experience. And to be fair, I mean, I've been around long enough to know that's what it was like in the old days. Those guys would have been playing for their provincial sides in South Africa. 
So, mm -hmm. you know, I can only control what I can control and what I can control is I need this gr group to grow uh, in the next couple of years and the one way we're going to have to do is to put, it, put in pressure situations like that and see whether we sink or swim. Um, Jake, I see uh, Marky uh, is, uh, is yes. in a brace. Is he, yes. is he out for this weekend? He's out for this weekend, yeah. yeah. yeah but it, actually, I mean, I've got quite good news. I mean, again, we're waiting for the MRI, but the doc doesn't think it was as bad as, as initially expected. But again, I'm waiting for the MRI. I don't want to tell you that, and then I find the MRI finds something else. Um, and that's why I took him off as well, guys. I mean, he's got a, he's got a Springbok career. He's got an important year. You know, he could have frustrated and, 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 and maybe strapped it. But I just thought, you know, just now everything goes in his knee and then he's out for nine months and I didn't want that. Jake, listening to your, your, your opening remarks and thank you for, for explaining what, what you've said. Did we see on Saturday, did we see a little bit of despondency on your face? Uh, no, I don't know about despondency. I suppose a little bit of a... Uh, I don't like to lose him. And I don't like it when... You know, I almost felt like in the change room at 14, 12, I thought, geez, there's hope here. We've been there before, you know, but I suppose it just wasn't despondency. I suppose the word is just a reality check in my face, you know, just to understand that, you know, you got to, you, when you're comparing apples with apples, it's fine, but you're not comparing apples with apples. You know. I use the example, Ned Bench, just come off winning the Six Nations back to back, six of those seven guys, or seven of those eight guys. And, you know, our bench is season team that's been together as juniors, played SAA, been selected in extended alignment caps. You know, there's a hell of a difference just in personnel. So you know, I didn't I didn't for one minute sit there and, and, and I just get, for me just basically a reality check of where we are and you know basically coding to myself what we need to do going forward. It's a, it's a fact that you, you've spoken about that many times. With us you've been um, all around informing us as well as the, the powers that be that we need the guys to come back here and like you said beating on the same drum. yeah yeah it's not going to happen overnight first of all secondly yeah. you have the players that you have yeah so is it a question of you have to do with these guys yeah and do the best that you can do with yeah, well I, th I mean again part of my message to them this morning is you know what we can control is we can train better we train harder we can train with more intensity we can make less mistakes because obviously when you make mistakes against Leinster, you get punished. So those are things that we as a group can get right. I chatted to, you know, our owners, and our owners are exactly the same page as me, you know. I mean, Johan Rupert knows sport better than most owners know sport. And he's, you know, he's fully aware of the fact that if you're going to bring on seven internationals off your bench, and let's consider guys, they didn't have Hugo Keenan, they didn't have, uh, I mean, there's a lot of other guys, Ring Rose didn't play, you know, there's, I mean, I, I can't even remember them off by heart, but I mean, there's probably another four or five cars that will make their team even stronger. Um, so when you analyze that, I mean, we, we got to play catch up and we've got to find a way to play catch up. And one of those ways is what we control is train better, train more accurate, make sure we're harder on ourselves during sessions, make sure we don't make mistakes because we get punished against good teams. And those are the things that we will, we will do. But I suppose from a leadership point of view, we're going to have to find a way uh, in which we can, over time, compete with those big clubs. Jake, uh, is the is challenge confidence rise to let the players believe again that a uh, much better side than what Friday showed? I mean, it's still a team that's no, well, competing uh, at yeah. this season. Well, Kubis, I do think we are a much better side than that. You know, I mean, I'll give you an example, just a little thing. We, we were 14-12 up and they got a penalty straight off to half time and they kicked in the corner. And other teams would go, listen, let's take the lead and go for it. The difference between them is they're so oiled and so, I mean, they almost said, right, there we go. And then they scored after 16 phases, they scored there. And then it was almost catch up. And the one thing I will tell you, it's flipping hard to play against that team and play catch up rugby. Um, and that's probably why they'd look as well, because I realize it's the one group of players that if they're on song to play catch up against them. Now the last time we beat them there, we we had, I mean, we literally got away and then they scored in the last play to lose by one point. So, I mean, it's just lessons that you learn as you get older as a coach. It's, they, they're so oiled and so professional and so meticulous about the way they play that if they get a, like a two, you know, two try start or a 10 point start where you've got to score twice, it's not, it's not impossible, but it's, it's, very, it's not many teams that have done it and come back against them by the next month should be available and um, Cole Brink, he's also no so he's basically out for four months he, he, um, he injured his, his foot 
So it's a bit almost similar to what happened. It's quite bizarre. It's almost similar to what happened to, to Giannis. So, yeah, it is, it is one of those things. I mean, Cameron's been out for a while. Um, you know, and we lost, we lost uh, Carl now. And we lost Marku now. So, but, uh, you know, that's one of the things I learned from last year is that you've got to trust that the group we have is the group we have. Come. Jake, taking it into account your, Chris, your Christmas wishing list yes. and the uh, uh, restrictions that's placed by yes. SA Rugby on you, are you fighting a losing battle? Yeah, well, in some ways, Carl, I mean, I, 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 it sounds, I can only control what I want, but I would, I mean, it's like anything. My, Chris, my Christmas wish list, I'd like to be able to pick the strongest South African side possible. And that's my Chris, Christmas wish list, not asking for too much. Um, and you know, you consider you've got to give guys eight weeks leave as well now. So the guys that aren't, are not eligible to play in the next couple of weeks because they're on leave. Uh, I mean, you guys can do your own mathematics. But if you've got a squad of 55 players and you have to give them eight weeks leave within a season for them to play Curry Cup, and you have to play Curry Cup, and you've got to play European Cup, and you've got to play, and you've got to have a team that's, that shows transformation. And you've got to have a team that's got to be competitive and win against teams that have a, you know, three times the budget you have. I mean, you know, as I said, it's not, you can only control the things you can control and we'll give it our best shot. But I, will, I suppose, hopefully Father Christmas one day will bring, you know, in my sock, you'll bring a couple of these season Springboks to come back. No, no, no. I mean, every game for the Bulls is important. I think if I had to tell the supporters that this game doesn't count or next week doesn't count, I think the Bulls supporters would, you know, we've got Bulls supporters that want to win every week and there's nothing wrong with that. So we're home, uh, we've just come back from travel. Um, you know, the nicest thing about rugby is the rebound. You know, it's a lot of things change in seven days. And we were poor in the last 40 minutes of that game and the only way you get it right is you make sure you play well the next Saturday. I mean, the really good teams and the teams that go on to be successful are the ones that can get a rebound. So you're confident about this weekend? Yeah, yeah. Well, no. Have them off yesterday. They spent some time with their families. They are you know, nice and rejuvenated. They're fresh. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity to go from top 16 into the quarterfinals of Europe. I mean, that means that, you know, you're one of the top clubs, clubs in the world. And this is... You know, my wife asked me yesterday, what does EPCR stand for? It stands for European Professional uh, Rugby Clubs. And if you're in the top eight of the best clubs in the, in the world, well, then you know you're in a good place, especially from where we started three years ago, four years ago. Brian, Coach, I know it's, sometimes it can be a bit difficult to give time frames and stuff, but you know, Ila, when you, in yes. your opinion, when you talk about how far you yes, yes, are, yes. Best, how long do you think it will take for you to obviously you're going to keep on losing blood but you can comfortably be where you, yeah. where you want to be. Well it can take one week as soon as the decision is made the best players play in South Africa or it can take forever. That's as easy as it is. You know, it's like anything. You, you, you support Bafana Bafana. We're not going to pick the best players for Bafana Bafana. Well then you can coach until the you know you can coach until the cows come home. You're not going to you're going to win. So the answer to that, the question is very simple. It's when we get the when we get the availability of the best players available to play for your province. You must understand one thing, guys. I mean, you've got to always compare apples with apples. We play Leon this weekend. Col Coltman plays hooker for them. He's an all-black. Tate prop plays for Tonga. Uh, you know, the, the Ioni plays for Italy. Um, Red Rodra plays for Fiji. Now, we don't pick international players from other countries in this country. There's no players that we can pick like Fijians or Tongans or All Blacks. Or, so our market is only pick South African players. And if you can't pick the best South African players available, and all we're going to do is pay our school fees in big competitions with the cal caliber of player we have, trying hard, young, enthusiastic, and then they leave and go and play against you. I mean, then, then the answer is very simple. Then it could take forever. Maybe. Maybe. So, um, was there any sighting on that very close? No, no, no. You mean from out? No, from there. Oh, you mean for us sighting them? No, no, no. Or no. From the sighting officer? Yeah, no, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. In S fact, I spoke bizarre. to Tapa, Tapa. Yeah, Tapa was under the impression that the shoulder hit the shoulder first before the head. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> but, you know, that that is... No, no, don't... I mean, that, that happens, and I don't think that that changed the outcome of the no. fixture, you know? No. 